At the end of Hochul's COVID briefing today, she took on questions from reporters about allegations of corruption. Republicans are calling on the governor to hand over records after a report revealed she got a major campaign donation from a company the state did big business with during the Omicron surge. I think that the U.S. attorney should investigate this. New York Republicans leveling allegations of corruption today against New York Governor Kathy Hochul after a report from the Albany Times Union newspaper revealed a family donated $300,000 to the Hochul campaign. The same family that was paid more than $600 million doing business with New York State. They've given over $300,000. They've never given a donation to any state candidate before. I mean, this smacks of corruption. I think we need to have uh, prosecutors take a good hard look at this. This could very well be an indictable offense. Republican Chairman Nick Langworthy calling for a criminal investigation, today demanding Hochul and the Department of Health turn over all communications with the Tabelli family, which owns the company Digital Gadgets, that benefited when the state purchased at-home COVID tests with that $600 million price tag. And Hochul went on the defensive at a news conference when reporters asked her to comment on their large campaign donation. I was not aware that this was a company that had been supportive of me. I don't keep track of that. A quick search on the state controller's website shows dozens of payments from the DOH to Digital Gadgets. According to the Times Union report, Digital Gadgets was awarded the $637 million in business without having to go out to bid, meaning other COVID test manufacturers did not have a chance to compete. During today's press conference, one of Hochul's top staffers said Digital Gadgets was chosen because it was the only only source of tests at the time during the winter Omicron surge. If you recall, you couldn't walk into a drugstore at the time and get a test. We would have taken test kits from anyone who could have provided it because it was not only to make sure that the schools opened, but that they stayed open. It contributes to the perception that Albany operates on a pay-to-play basis. Government watchdog Bill Hammond of the Empire Center for Public Policy says Hochul's emergency pandemic powers allowed her to skirt the rules when choosing the company. She was using emergency powers, which was unusual, and bypassing the usual process of vetting the contract. She didn't have to do competitive bidding. She didn't have to um, have the controller's office check the contract. And it ended up going to a pretty significant donor. While the donation looks bad for Hochul, Hammond says it may not be criminal. I would hesitate to say that you have enough here to, to bring a criminal case. But I do think there's enough for people to ask questions and to raise criticisms. And Hammond says this case also calls into question the governor's use of emergency pandemic powers. Almost three years into the pandemic, the governor is still officially treating COVID as an emergency. The governor just signed another executive order this month. Hammond says that allows her to continue bypassing rules that vet state contracts, picking companies she wants to work with without giving others a chance. There are just a few dozen hospital beds available in Syracuse. Emergency crews say they're responding to a higher rate of heat-related emergencies this week. It's putting stress on the hospital system, still trying to pick up the pieces from the pandemic. Our Connor White reports. Before EMTs hit the road, they're checking the weather. These are rapid cool packs. Waves Ambulance Director Eric Kehoe says when real field temps hit triple digits like they did on Wednesday... <laughs> They get an influx of calls for heat-related emergencies. People with underlying health problems, such as heart disease, breathing problems, are really exacerbated by extreme heat and especially prolonged exposure to extreme heat. These heat-related calls come with the summer, but what hasn't changed from the winter is they're still bringing patients to a hospital system that's under immense stress. Our call volume went up astronomically in 2021, and that trend continues to this day. We're, we're seeing higher call volumes now than we have ever seen. Keo says his crews are still waiting for hours outside emergency rooms, trying to unload patients into hospitals that don't have the staff to handle them. The system itself is, is essentially broken. We're all just trying to outwork the problem. It's not COVID-19 itself hurting hospitals now, according to Kehoe, but the virus's lingering impact. Left short-staffed as nurses left the profession entirely or for higher paying jobs. According to state data, as of Monday, there were 24 free beds citywide.
bed, all at Kraus, with every staffed bed in use at Upstate, Upstate Community General, and at St. Joe's. Our entire system is stressed to the max, and you throw one more thing on top of that, like a, a prolonged heat event for even a couple of days, that's going to just compound the problem that we're already seeing. Still asking patients to try to use urgent care or primary doctors for non-emergency.